So let's start to talk about the shape of our graph and, and this term called skewness and how it relates to the mean, median, and mode. So one characterization of the general shape of your graph is related to the number of peaks, or maybe we'll refer to that as modes. Um, you might use the phrase unimodal if you have a single peak in your graph. If you ever have two peaks, we would call that bimodal. You can extend that, three, tri three peaks, trimodal, uh, usually four or more, we'll just say multimodal. So a plot or a graph is symmetric if there is a vertical line of symmetry such that the part of the plot to the left of the line is a mirror image of the part to the right. Uh, in the real world, data is super messy. Uh, it's very, very rare where something's exactly symmetric. So we will use the phrase roughly symmetric when describing the shape of a graph, as most graphs are not perfectly symmetric. If you do ever run across that graph that is per perfectly symmetric, awesome, take a picture of it, enjoy it, and use the phrase symmetric. But for all of the real world data we look at, it's, it's roughly symmetric. And sometimes it'll be just, we'll put the rough in roughly symmetric. We'll be pretty liberal with, with our symmetry here. So proceeding to the right from the peak of a unimodal plot, we move into what is called the upper tail of the plot. Going in the opposite direction moves us into the lower tail. All right, so before I get to the next sentence, I want to scooch this up just a bit and start to talk about upper tail versus lower tail. For any graph, you've got your x-axis down here. So your upper tail is going to be the tail of your graph that's on the high side of the x-axis, and your lower tail will always be the end of your graph that's on the low side of your x-axis. So low to high, lower to upper tail, right? Low to high x values, lower tail, upper tail. All right, so if you have a unimodal plot, you got one peak, if you have a unimodal plot that is not symmetric, we will say it's skewed. And there are two directions that your graph can skew. It can skew right and it can skew left. So let's start to learn about how to detect skewness, whether it be left or right. So if the upper tail of the plot stretches out much farther than the lower tail, then the distribution is skewed right, or sometimes we use the phrase positively skewed. So I want us to take a look at this first plot here. It's unimodal, you see the one peak there. All right, this is the upper tail and this is the lower tail. And you can see that the upper tail is stretched a lot further than the lower tail. It, it might be counterintuitive, you might say, well, the, the data clumped on the left side, on the lower side of the x-axis. And that's true, but the way we talk about skewing is we talk about the tails. So since the right tail is longer, you would say it's skewed right, or the upper tail is longer, you would say it was skewed right. And then I put in italics here, the mean is to the right of the median. So when graphs are completely symmetric, um, the mean and the median are the exact same. We ran into this um, back before example four when I gave you those three little data sets. And in two of those data sets, the mean and median were exactly the same. Those were perfectly symmetric graphs or perfectly symmetric data sets. We didn't actually make a graph about those data sets. So when the mean and median, I'm sorry, when, when the, I should say, when your graph is symmetric, the mean and median are exactly the same. And what happens when things skew is that you have outliers, or potential outliers over here on the high side of your data. They, they may be outliers, they might not. We, we'd actually need to get the raw data and create a safety zone. But when you have fewer or less frequent high values and your tail is extending here, your median does not get as affected or does not really get affected. It can get affected a little bit, but it's, it's much more resistant to those high values. So your median tends to stay pretty close to the peak. But what happens is your mean gets pulled towards those high values. So instead of your mean and median both being at the same spot, your mean skews right, or it becomes larger than your me uh, median, excuse me. So in a skewed right graph, the mean is pulled to the right. It's pulled towards the high side of the data. And another way of saying that is that the mean is larger than the median. So if you have a skewed right graph, your mean is greater than your median. And imagine 
we just had some numbers on the x-axis, right? If this was one, two, three, four, five, six, right? The median was five, the mean was six, the mean is larger. So that's all that's happened in a skewed right graph. Skewed right graph, right tail's longer, mean is a little bit larger than the median. Uh, in terms of a box plot, you can see the, the skewed right uh, nature of this box plot. So if I, if I look at this box plot, this right tail here is larger than that left tail there. Okay. And really, I, I also look at it as, as in the larger picture as a whole. I look at the right half of the data versus the left half of the data. This right half of the data, you can see it's spread out a lot further than the left half of the data. So I have a right tail that is longer than a left tail, so we've got a skewed right graph. In terms of a stem and leaf plot, how can we address the shape? So in a stem and leaf plot, this was one of the only plots where we didn't have our x-axis with our variable on the bottom. And I don't know if you've picked out where your, your variable is. It's kind of hidden, but your variable is actually on these stems. So how you determine whether your stem and leaf plot is skewed right, skewed left, or roughly symmetric is we are going to rotate this page 90 degrees and create our own x-axis. So now I can see my x-axis here. I'm going low to high, right? As I move left to right, that's important. You wanna make sure that the x-axis you've created through that rotation is going low to high as you move left to right because that's what our number lines do. And if you kind of sketched out a potential distribution, a potential graph, you can see here that the right tail is much longer than the left tail. So this is a skewed right stem and leaf plot. All right. A few folks say the phrase positively skewed. Those are interchangeable. I don't really say positively skewed. You'll hear me say skewed right far more often. On the flip of that, we've got the skewed left graph. So let's take a look at those. So in a skewed left distribution, all right, we have the lower tail is longer than the upper tail. So again, imagine this is the x-axis, or don't even imagine it, it is the x-axis. Here's my lower tail, here's my upper tail. And I say lower and upper because these are the smaller x values on the x-axis, these are the larger x values on the x-axis. So if your lower tail is longer than your upper tail, we'll say that you have skewed left. Or again, sometimes we use the phrase negatively skewed. And the median, it's gonna stay pretty close to wherever that peak was. But since this isn't symmetric, your mean and median aren't in the same spot, and your mean has been pulled towards those low variable values, those low values. So your mean has moved to the left of your median. Okay. And I could say here that in a skewed left graph, the mean is actually less than the median. So in a symmetric graph, the mean and median are exactly the same. In a skewed right graph, the mean is larger than the median. In a skewed left graph, the mean is less than the median. So you've got all three options. They're the same, median smaller, or the mean smaller, just depending on if you're roughly symmetric or how you skew. All right, so let's take a look at this in a couple of other graphs. All right, so here we go. I've got my histogram here. And if I kind of put a curve over that, you can see that that skews left. In terms of your stem and leaf plot, again, let's go ahead, rotate it 90 degrees. All right, and when you do this, you're creating an x-axis. Now make sure your x values are going from low to high as you move left to right. They are in this case, there's my number line. And if I try and sketch out the shape of that graph, I can see that the left tail is longer than the right tail. So this is, again, a skewed left distribution or a skewed left graph. All right, let's take all of that vocab we just learned and put it to use. So if I'm taking a look at example 11, what words could you use to describe the shapes of these plots? Let's figure it out. So I see I have your uh, histogram. All right, I've got mortality rate and I can see my y-axis is over here in frequencies. But in terms of the shape of this plot, uh, if I were to draw my best graph, I could see here that someone might call this skewed right. Okay. And I could also 
see someone saying this was roughly symmetric. Because while it might slightly skew right, the right tail might be a little bit longer than the left tail, it's, it's also pretty close. And that's okay. The one thing it is not, I think we can all, or I hope we can all agree on, it is not skewed left. So if we were coming upon an exam and you told me skewed right or roughly symmetric, I'd be okay with that. But if you told me skewed left, I would have a problem with it. So I'm gonna put a little note here, it is not skewed left. All right, and I'm going to start to just use abbreviations. Um, I could also see somebody saying this was trimodal because you saw three peaks here. All right, um, but for the most part, we stick with the, the big three, skewed right, skewed left, or roughly symmetric. All right, I'm going to scoot over to this stem and leaf plot, and I'm going to remind myself that if I have a stem and leaf plot, I need to create my own x-axis by rotating my graph 90 degrees. I'm gonna just take a quick note that the, the x-axis is increasing as I move left to right, and I'll talk about what you need to do when you have a descending or a decreasing x-axis. Um, we, we saw that briefly in the very first example, and we'll, we'll circle back around to that. Um, so if I was gonna draw a distribution here, again, I, I look at this and I see the left tail does look longer than the right tail. So I could see the argument where somebody would say this was skewed left. I could also see someone saying, well, the tails are pretty close in size, so maybe it's roughly symmetric. Either one of those are okay, but what is not okay is skewed right. So it is not a skewed right graph. It's roughly symmetric or skewed left. And just taking a look at this, right? I also just want to point out they're using the low high system. Uh, and, and another thing I see is I see some gaps. All right, so let me rotate this back. And then let's write this up. So I could see roughly symmetric. Oops. All right, I could see skewed left. I would say there are gaps. Um, gaps in well, the low 22s, high 23s, and low 24s. And 24L. And if, if there are gaps in the data, that's fine. I just, you need to talk about where are those gaps, right? We want, we want to write that information up. Um, but one thing this is not, this is not skewed right. So roughly symmetric skewed left, completely acceptable in an exam. Skewed right is not acceptable. I do see the little key here, that's looking good. Uh, I don't have any titles, so I'm not sure what the context of the data is. So that's another thing I would note here. Okay, let's move along to some other graphs. So as I start to look at these next couple of graphs, this is a dot plot. We didn't officially go over a dot plot, but a dot plot is basically a histogram and instead of making rectangles, you put dots for those variables, uh, or the values of your variable, and there is a frequency along the y-axis. So this is average days with no rainfall in a sample of 25 European countries. So I, I would want a label down here that this is days, or average days with no rainfall. and the units are number of days, if we want to make sure our graph is correct. And that technically, over on the y-axis, there should be a frequency label here. And you can see that they're at one, two, so on and so forth, if I wanted to make that graph a little bit more explicit. but. Ultimately, this was just asking me about the shape of the data. So if I try and make a distribution over that graph, to me, this one is skewed left. It's not roughly symmetric. It is definitely skewed left. Okay. I see this big gap in the high 20s. If you want to mention the gaps here in the teens, that's fine, but this is the, the largest gap. 
Moving over to the histogram, right? We've got average test score, so that's some kind of point system. I've got frequency along the y-axis. If I try and put a graph or I'd sketch a distribution over that, I can see this is skewed left. Right? And maybe we're starting to pick up on it, right? There's some gaps in the 240s, right? And just to kind of touch on a previous point before we move to the last two, if, if you were telling me you had a graph that was skewed right, that would mean the mean is a little bit to the right of the median. So if this was, I'll put, do it this way, if this was the mean, then my pen would be the median. So my mean has been moved to the right of my median. Um, if things are roughly symmetric, then both of these, oops, excuse me, both of these are in the same position, right? Over here, with the stem and leaf plot, right? If you're telling me roughly symmetric, mean and median are in the same spot. If you're telling me skewed left, then the mean has been a the the mean has been moved a little bit to the left of the median. Right. So same deal would happen with both of these graphs. The median would stay close to the peak. The mean would be moved to the left. Right. The median would stay close to the peak. The mean would be a little bit to the left. So let's do these last two. All right, the very last one I see, or not very last, second to last, I see the stem and leaf plot. Okay, turn it on its side. They're not officially saying low, high, but I can see the repeats of the zeros and the ones. And this is skewed left. I also see some gaps. Right. Um, if I was playing teacher, which sometimes I do, I would take note that there was no title, there was no key, there was no context. All right, so skewed left, gaps at zero high and one high, okay? And this last one, this will become our favorite curve. This is the normal distribution. Maybe you've heard of it before, maybe you haven't. Um, sometimes it's referred to as the bell curve. All right. Statisticians are obsessed with it. I'm gonna put little hearts around it. We love this graph. We will pick it up again in chapter six and then we will never let it go. In terms of shape, uh, common words that you're gonna hear uh, at, at, in chapter six, you're gonna hear the phrase approximately normal. And while this one is perfectly normal, um, because it's the, the theoretical curve, the real world, like I said, data gets really messy, so we don't have things that are exactly normal in the real world, but we use the phrase approximately normal. You could also, you could also have used one of our phrases from this chapter. We could have said roughly symmetric. Um, I could have seen the phrase unimodal. So all sorts of options there, but we're really gonna get into things being approximately normal once chapter six comes back around. All right, so in terms of our three most common shape adjectives, skewed left, skewed right, roughly symmetric.